I'm a hilltop girl, Linda Phillips, the great-granddaughter of four generations of builders of houses on the hilltop, daughter of Randall, granddaughter of Benjamin Lee, great-granddaughter of John William, and great-great-granddaughter of Benjamin, all lived in Columbus, west of the Scioto River on the hilltop. They were men talented in the use of hammers and saws, drills and screwdrivers, bolts and nails. They were shapers of wood, builders of houses around Columbus. In this photograph are all the generations together on a Sunday afternoon at Grandma Phillips' home in 1914 at a family gathering. The senior, Benjamin Senior, immigrated from North Wales in 1845 at the age of 16. And Dad would tell us the story that Benjamin purchased panes of glass which he carried across Pennsylvania and Ohio to Lewis Center north of Columbus, a Welsh enclave, and there he sold them and bought tools and began his work as a carpenter. One day Dad took me to the rotunda of the Ohio State House and pointed to the wooden balcony surrounding the rotunda and told me that Benjamin had been one of the hired carpenters that did the carpentry on the State House as it was built. Well, Benjamin married another immigrant from England who was a hat maker, a milliner, and they had eight children, and John, their oldest, was named after his grandfather. He was a farmer, a man of all trades. Three of John's four boys are standing behind him, Benjamin, Emmett, and Paul. Paul is unmarried still because he's 13 years younger than Benjamin and Emmett, and, but he built houses, and this is one of his houses. He taught his son, Paul Jr., to build houses, and he is still building houses in Florida. Benjamin's youngest son, Randall, age five, is standing beside his sister, Nellie. That's my dad and my aunt, who were born in the famous 1913 flood while my grandfather, Benjamin, was sheltered in the third floor attic inside a flooded area of the uh, bottom of Franklinton for a week. He hadn't been able to leave the house at West Park he was building before the floodwaters made escape impossible. And I always love to hear about the crated chickens okay. and the mattresses and whatever the sheltering family had carried up to the attic for survival in those days. Dad said that everyone would go down to the hill to check on the list of the dead each morning, hoping that Benjamin's name would not be there. After a week, he was rescued, went to the capital side of the river, and walked home to the house he had built on North Hague to be greeted by a happy wife, his father John William, my father Randall, and the newly arrived baby Nellie. Randall, my dad, spent countless hours pounding nails into the wooden back steps, making skateboards out of old skates and lumber scraps and cars for the annual Soapbox Derby. He learned drafting and carpentry and home building skills at the Starling Trade School, which is the old West High on Central Avenue. And he and his father continued building houses all over the hilltop until the Great Depression in 1929 until 35. In order to keep the loans from defaulting at the bank, they rehabbed the local homes that the bank had taken back. They got no money for their work, but it did offset their own loans and kept the houses from being repossessed. And those always stories that you sometimes hear about people selling apples on the street corners were no lie in our family. My father Randall and a friend set up a vegetable stand on the corner of Broad and Chase during the summers of those years selling vegetables and fruit and they took home to eat what was unsellable. And in Christmas time, they sold Christmas trees. Each of Benjamin's children married and began families and Dad built a house, he and Dad built a house for them. Well, not for free exactly, the labor might be free, but the mortgage for the land and the materials went out to the new family to be paid on. Here's one house on Hague for Nellie, one on Powell for us, and later on Valley View Drive, when the family grew. One on Bam Tamaris for Betty, when her husband came home from serving in World War II. And the homestead for Katie. That hilltop that had stopped at the east side of Hague Avenue when Dad was a kid had expanded clear to the west overhead tracks at Demers by my childhood. And Dan and Grandpa built their last custom houses for the families north in the Hilliard Scioto River area in the 50s. But there was always need for a good craftsman with a hammer 
and dad continued to work until his death in 1980. Nellie's sons and carry on the craftsman skills for the Phillips family now.